Attorney Patrick Lamar believes where there's smoke, there's fire. But he's at a disadvantage due to the officer's actions that night. We don't know how intoxicated he appeared. And the bad thing about it is we will never know how intoxicated he was because the police let him go without a test. Lamar's own investigators discovered Officer Hatchett was returning home that night from a party, a party at which other officers in attendance believed he was too drunk to drive. He was intoxicated enough at that time that when he tried to leave the party, the people there tried to get him to take a Lyft or an Uber, you know, a ride service. Hey folks, Dale Jackson here for Yellow Hammer Now, and uh, we've got to talk about this story involving Madison police officers who have allegedly allowed an Athens police officer to go home after an accident that appears to be a DUI accident. Now, there's a simple solution to all of this, and when you hear this story, you're going to be a little bit shocked, but I'm going to jump to the end here. The simple solution is show the body cam footage. And I've said this a thousand times, the body cam footage in some instances will protect the police and in some instances it will screw the police. But the reality is we should know exactly what happened and know the truth. That's what's lacking in this story and this story is very upsetting. Serious allegations have been levied against two North Alabama police departments accused of protecting one of their own. Lawsuits filed on behalf of two young women injured in a crash last fall say the man responsible was allowed to leave the scene, even though the Madison police officers who responded thought he was drunk. Turns out the man behind the wheel of the car that caused the head-on crash is also an officer from neighboring Athens PD. I personally believe that any of us, you, me, anybody, if we had had this happen, we would have been in jail. But that's not what happened that night at the intersection of Highway 72 and Wall Triana. Two young women coming home from meeting friends, sitting in the turn lane, hit head on. And as head on as I've ever seen. Attorney Patrick Lamar, who now represents the women, says the driver made no attempt to take any evasive action. He says the two women managed to get out of their wrecked car through the passenger door and collapsed to the ground. Lamar says the other driver, identified as Athens police officer Isaiah Hatchett, though apparently not seriously hurt, never checked on them. He didn't call the emergency line. That was done by bystanders who helped the girls out of the road. The women were rushed to the hospital. Broken bones, bruises, one required emergency surgery. According to the police report, Madison police who responded believed the driver who hit them was intoxicated. Uh, the reason we know that is because they issued what's known as a field sobriety test, which is just those little maneuvers you go through to physical maneuvers to try and show that you're not drunk. They marked down on the report that the results were inconclusive, which to us seems very suspect. Officers wrote Hatchet a ticket for driving on the wrong side of the road and having an open container in his car. And then the officers made the determination that this officer, this Athens police officers should be allowed to go home. My clients and I both believe that officers of the law should not give officers of the law a break to walk away from a scene when the evidence is as clear as it is here. Lamar says this is not a vendetta against the police department, but there can't be a double standard. You can't have a standard for me and have a different standard for the police, dealing with the police. I don't think that's the way it works. Lamar's been refused access to body camera footage. He believes the Madison officers are under investigation for allowing the Athens officer to leave the scene of the accident with injuries without a blood alcohol test. So it appears these police officers in Madison let another police officer go home and did not give him a breathalyzer and did not take him down to the station because he refused one. They sent him on his way. And if it's true, that other officer said he was too drunk to drive at a party they were at beforehand, and all of this went down, that's even worse. Because now you have other people who know exactly what went on, and this officer is still on duty? Uh, this officer is, is still there? Come on, guys. you got to do the right thing in these situations. If these allegations are true, it's a failure on so many different levels. And there's going to be ramifications eventually.
for the Madison Police Department and for the officer uh, involved. There cannot be a double standard. The attorney here is correct. And the best way to find out what the truth actually is, is to release body cam footage from the officers involved. We will get a look at how drunk this guy appears or doesn't. But he had an open container in his car and he left a party where people thought he was too drunk to drive. I think that's pretty clear. If that is true, this has been a complete failure uh, by the Madison Police Department to do the right thing. And it appears by the Athens Police Department as well. Hopefully this investigation gives us the truth. But once again, Alabama law is not clear enough on body cam footage. If it was, we wouldn't have to have these conversations because we would know what the truth was. And that's what the body cam footage is for. And yes, I've been called a bootlicker and all these other things before. Even some hilarious memes have been made. I put some more effort into it next time, guys. I've been called way worse, but it doesn't matter. The truth is the truth. And the body cam, as I said in the Stephen Perkins case in Decatur, the body cam will set us free. It will tell us the truth. And that's why we need a better law in Alabama that makes it clear how this body cam footage can be made available.